Doctors of Reddit, what is a one in a million chance thing about your patient you have witnessed? I was diagnosed with an ocular melanoma, itself quite rare, that went into tumor necrosis. My doctor said one in five million. I'd rather be boring. I'm not a doctor, but I am a patient who had an ACL avulsion. That's where your ACL is so strong that instead of tearing, it pulls a piece of bone off your tibia. Apparently it's pretty rare. As a dentist, we are used to seeing unerupted teeth still stuck in the bone which we call impacted teeth. The third molars are notorious for this, and after them, the canine teeth also get impacted. We confirm this when we see the radiographs of the patient. I was seeing this radiograph of a colleague's patient who had a missing canine which we were expecting on find impacted. We were not able to find it and thought it was missing. On closer inspection, we saw it impacted just below the eye lying horizontally. Had a very sick child with influenza. Spent 6 months in my IQ. Had a month of blood gases that were not compatible with life. Had multiple collapsed lungs. He's currently in 6th grade no ventilator. No tracheostomy. Literally no complications for the long term. I was a paramedic and I came to a scene where I had a patient who was talking to me. But he had no blood pressure. And no detectable pulse. I couldn't even hear his heartbeat with a high quality stethoscope. They dumped a few bags of fluid in him in the ED before they were barely able to get a BP on him. B worked on Carlogy for 5 years and I've had several with no decimable BP and one with no palpable pulse. That crap will make your own BP shoot through the roof. Had a veteran patient who had spina bifida on his problem list. Somehow he had made it though 20 plus years in the military and didn't get diagnosed with spina bifida occulta, which is present at birth, until after he got out. Have also seen, atrial intramural hematoma, blood between the tissue layers of one of the upper heart chambers, myxedema coma, end stage hypothyroidism, which is quite rare in modern times, mid aortic syndrome, calcified blockages of the major blood vessel of the body, looks like coral on a CT scan, in an adult veteran, it is usually a childhood condition, there are probably more, I'll add them here if I think of them. Story from last year, after a pretty uneventful pregnancy a woman goes into labor but it doesn't advance as quickly as it should so she gets a secondary cesarean section. Standard procedure, the baby gets out and its eyeball is almost pressed out of the eye socket. Everybody is in shock, the parents start crying, we don't know what to do. Turns out the child had a huge tumor of the temporal lobe which pushed the eye out. We later analyzed the ultrasound pics and the tumor was already there so it just got overlooked. Brain tumors in neonates are even rarer than 1 in a million. It's actually 0. 3 per million so I hope I'll never see such a case again. Unfortunately I don't know the outcome. The child was transferred to another hospital. My research lab works on exactly these kinds of cases. Embryonal tumors are a nightmare for the family but from a science standpoint one of the remaining unknown frontiers so to speak. One of my patients nearly died from an amniotic embolism while she was in labor. It's so rare that the only way to diagnose it is by ruling pretty much everything else out first. It's essentially when the amniotic fluid accidentally passes into the mum's bloodstream. She had a cardiac arrest and we did CPR while doing an emergency c-section. She is slowly recovering but has lost most of her brain function. Who all shit. I am very glad I didn't know about that when I was pregnant. That is absolutely terrifying. I once saw an IV drug user who managed to break an old needle off in his vein when injecting and presented with chest pain. It was only when we were doing an angiogram we noticed the needle fragment embedded in his heart. I've never seen this before or since. TLDR. Needle inside the heart in a drug user. Couldn't get it out. Bad situation. I once saw a newborn baby who was a true mix of genders. In at X. I was part of the meeting with the top pediatricians discussing the case. The patient's gender was clinically indeterminate from external genitalia. MRI showed one ovary and half a uterus on one side and a partially descended testicle on the other side. To decide once and for all they used genetic analysis to analyze the chromosome makeup however this showed a 50. 50 mosaic of cells, some of which were XX, female, and some of which were XY, male. A very confusing case as to what to do next. Unfortunately I was unable to follow this one up. I'm a vet. 
It wasn't the patient so much as the owners. A dog was brought in because it was giving birth. The only thing was that it was male. The woman, late 30, was screaming that she sees the head. In reality those were his testicles. In the end I had to sit and explain to her about the birds and the bees. I was a nursing student years back and many of the students in my year thought that women pee out of their twats. Some of the people who believed this were old enough to have grandchildren. I'm the patient, but I have a type of mesothelioma that's extremely rare. Pelvic cystic mesothelioma. I'm the 154th known person to ever have it. Sorry to hear that you're part of an incredibly exclusive club. Best of luck to you going forward. Medical student here. Had a 13 year old who presented to our service with a heart attack. After we worked him up, it turns out when he was a toddler he had unidentified Kawasaki's diseases that went untreated. One of the complications is coronary artery aneurysm which in his case clotted over and caused the heart attack. Overall, he got better but has to be on blood thinners for the rest of his life. People might be confused about the timeline. He had Kawasaki's when he was a toddler and spent a week in the hospital with a fever of unknown origin which wasn't diagnosed and he got better on his own. We saw him 10 years later when he came to our ED with a heart attack. My aunt and uncle-in-law are both doctors. Once, she was lying on his stomach and she heard something odd in his pulse blood flow. Went to the hospital that night and he had surgery to resolve and blockage which if it had ruptured he would have been dead in 10 minutes. All by pure chance. A guy with chronic kidney disease came to the on a delirium state, his consciousness rapidly declined and he went into cardiac arrest. Spent 7 minutes doing CPR while we corrected his potassium levels, the cause of the arrest. He recovered with no long term brain damage, which is very dang likely to happen when you spend that much time brain dead. Some weeks ago we played a match of table tennis and he was okay. Good stuff. Not a doctor but a nurse. I work with a patient with CCHS, also known as Ondine's Curse. It affects around 1200 to 2000 people worldwide. You know how you can generally breathe without even thinking about it? Well people with CCHS can't do that. They are generally either on a ventilator or hooked to diaphragmatic pacemakers. It sends an electric pulse to their phrenic nerve, which then causes their diaphragm to draw a breathe. Or they can do something called sprinting which is just being off equipment for a few minutes at a time. If they focus on it they can usually breathe in their own. There are a few other problems that are common besides just breathing but I don't feel like listing them off. The most interesting part to me is the law. According to French and German mythology, the nymph Undine Undine discovered that her husband had committed adultery because he had promised his every waking breath to her. She cursed him that so long as he was awake he could breathe. But if he ever fell asleep he would stop breathing and die. Not a doctor. My friend was internally decapitated when he was 47. Today I talked with him. His voice is different and he told me he's started playing hockey again. I don't know the odds of surviving this accident. But what I do know is. Who survives this accident and goes and plays hockey just 18 months later? Knew a guy who was in a really bad car accident who was internally decapitated. It's a miracle he lived, despite his brush with death, and his miraculous recovery. He's still a douchebag with no regard for the second chance he has been given. Not a doctor, but a friend was living in South America 15 years ago. He had a cut on his leg and went swimming in some relatively clean water that had been sitting for a few weeks. It was a small tiled pool filled with drinking water. Enter flesh eating bacteria on his scrotum. He was the second known case and the doctors had no idea how to treat him. They ended up cutting his scrotum open and scraping the infected cells off leaving the wound open. Multiple times a day, nurses would clean the wound and pour sugar on it. Not too sure why, but it worked. He ended up living and pictures of his testicles are now floating around in medical journals as he was at the time the only survivor of this rare bacteria. Multiple times a day, nurses would clean the wound and pour sugar on it. Sugar is an osmotic dressing. Paramedic here. A co-worker of mine was out biking with some friends when one of their riders collapsed and went into cardiac arrest. The group lined up and provided CPR for this 50 years old guy out in the forest until Ems finally arrived and extricated him. They did CPR on him for an hour and he survived with no deficits. 
pretty slim chance of survival, but shows what good CPR can do. I'm not a doctor but my dad was diagnosed with hortencephaly. We don't know much about it since either the patients end up killing themselves because the pain is too intense or someone in a crisis, because the pain comes only at night, up to 4 times a night, each crisis lasts about an hour, is uncontrollable. There is no real remedy, since one drug might work for someone. My dad takes cardiac pills and it works, and won't for someone else. The doctor said the pain is like having an extremely hot ice pick inserted into the left side of the head, on the temple, or similar to giving birth without epidural, but now it's in the head and it can happen 4 times a night. My dad's an emergency room doctor. He had to be the first to tell a teenage girl that genetically she was in fact male. It's a condition called complete androgen insensitivity. People with it display all the phenotypes of being female. In fact they tend to appear as fairly tall and attractive women. But they don't possess ovaries and often aren't discovered until they don't get periods. So yeah this girl came into the air with a completely different issue. My dad took an x-ray and had to break it to the girl and her mom that she could never have kids. Not a doctor but, I have a pretty rare condition called citus inversus, which is a condition where all my internal organs are mirrored so my heart is on the right side and so on. All the doctors are always amazed by my condition since they've never seen anyone with it, so I guess I am some of those doctors one in a million patients. Not a doctor but an RN. I worked high risk labor and delivery for 15 years and I've seen lots of odd stuff. Potter's syndrome. Tetralogy of Fallot, Anacephalus, Yada, Yada. I had three moms deliver babies that all had transposition of the great vessels, where the heart vessels grow backwards, all within a three week period and all families lived within a five mile radius. Too uncanny. We had no research department, so I contacted the epidemiology program at our local medical university for the research opportunity. You might be lucky to see one in a lifetime. But 3 in 3 weeks is phenomenally weird. Something's in the water. I put the catheter in, got explosive diarrhea all over scrubs. Catheter goes in crap comes out, can't explain that. Sounds about right. You push on one end and it comes out the other. Either that or you scared the crap out of him by shoving a tube into his dong. I was an intern on the trauma service. A young lady had been in a car accident. I can't remember the details specifically, but she was crashing and an thoracotomy was performed. If this happens, your chances of dying are astronomical. It is truly last bitch. Turns out the accident was violent enough to rip a hole in her heart. The fourth year resident recognizes this immediate and sticks his finger in it literally plugging the dike. He straddles her with his finger still in her heart and she's taken immediately to surgery. He is literally prepped in with her until someone else can get scrubbed to plug the hole. He then scrubbed in and fixed it. She walked out of the hospital on her own power less than a week later. It is the single most badass thing I've ever witnessed. She should be dead, but because of him likely is walking around with no clue how lucky she is. I had a woman come in for her 11th delivery when I was an intern in a government hospital in India. She hadn't had a normal menstrual cycle since the birth of her first child. Kept alternating between pregnancy and lactational amenorrhea. Way down on the list here, but a 16 year old girl came and virtually decapitated after going to sleep at night. Her atlas and axis separated somehow. This is what keeps your head on your neck and lets you pivot it. Pretty much if her head was not supported and fell to the side it could sever the, the arteries. Every doctor in the place was astonished and never even heard about it before in school. I never even found anything on google about another case. Not sure what happened. She was moved to a way better hospital. I was a CT tech at the time. Not a doctor, nor is my family member, but they were the patient. My ho ho, grandpa, long story on the nickname, had his appendix burst when I was about 6 years old. He went a full day of camping with it, and then got pee off that he couldn't drink beer without it hurting anymore and had my grandma drive him to the hospital. Turns out, he has some pretty severe colon cancer, and the cancer growth had essentially held his burst appendix shut or rather together up until that point. He had been tested for colon cancer multiple times and it had all came back negative. 
and without his appendix bursting it would have likely gone unnoticed until it was terminal. He survived the surgery and beat the colon cancer within the next two years. Next year I'll be able to drink my first legal beer with him. And he couldn't be more excited. Heart transplant RN here we had the only patient in the world that this has happened to. Had a heterotrophic heart transplant. Implant a donor heart next to the native heart instead of replacing it. In the 90s. Comes to us with that heart failing. Young guy with young kids so we do all we can we stick him on ECMO. Basically heart lung bypass machine. Don't really have an end game strategy because most of these patients don't make it to this part even so the surgeons brainstorm. Decide to implant a total artificial heart. So they implant the Turin so shut the donor heart from the 90s. Which is to stay in his chest as it's scarred onto his lung. He recovers from that surgery and then finally gets a second heart transplant. With a kidney. So this man now has two donor hearts in his chest. One not working. Recovered and gone home. I had a patient who would have discrete episodes of confusion, speech difficulties, and balance disorders occasionally for years. Full workup W imaging, labs, eagle without diagnosis. Specialist at a tertiary facility ultimately diagnosed him W variant seizures, but the anti-epileptic RX didn't help. Symptoms got worse. Wife calls in for support because he is suddenly profoundly altered. And we send him to the air. And now, this guy doesn't drink at all. No, really. But surprise his blood alcohol level was ridiculously high. I diagnosed him W auto brewery syndrome put him on a carb free diet. And his SX vanished almost immediately if he has fruits, breads, carbs. He will predictably develop a back. Even under strict observation to make sure he is not drinking. Is he hiding alcohol usage? No. Because if he were someone with that kind of alcohol usage, you would expect to have relapses. Instead, he and his wife are the most happy people you could imagine. Not a doctor, but the patient who is a one in a million. I got diagnosed with a bone infection. 200,000 cases annually in the United States. It's some infection that settles in the bone and just incubates until I had some physical trauma to the area and it basically burst out into the surrounding soft tissue. I'm having a surgery on it next Thursday to aggressively clean it out and put in an antibiotic bead. My sister is a pathologist and she once found out her patient had spongiform encephalopathy, similar to mad cow disease. She had to remove the brain and send it to I believe the Mayo Clinic. Also, while she was in school, the doctors were about to start treating a patient with chemo for something that was thought to be like brain cancer, and she figured out it was actually a fungal infection and saved that patient many rounds of unnecessary chemo that wouldn't have worked anyway. One of my clients is a surgeon, said the craziest thing he's seen was that his patient's heart was backward, but there was no record of this and he was shocked that nobody caught it. Not a doctor but my mom for years complained that it felt like she was sleeping on a tennis ball. One day she's in pain and keeps dry heaving the pain is so bad. She still feels like she's sleeping on a tennis ball and so we take her to the hospital. The pain is horrible and she's describing it as worse than childbirth. Take her to the nearest hospital. They give her pain meds and tell her to come back Monday. She keeps taking the meds and it's not improving. It's getting worse. Sunday comes and she can't even move the pain is so bad. Once again, she feels like she's sleeping on a tennis ball. We take her to another hospital. It's further away but it's our we don't know any more choice. Doctor does tests, scans, etc. He comes to us and says she has an ovarian cyst the size of a softball and that that same ovary has been twisted. After a very long surgery, the cyst is removed. It was a little bigger than a softball and yes, the ovary was twisted. Three times. Rotating through neurology as a medical student at UCLA. We had a patient brought in from LAX airport, who'd collapsed on a trans-Pacific flight from Japan. He essentially stopped breathing, and wasn't moving his arms and legs. We did a massive workup with MRI and CAT scans of the brain and spine, blood work, spinal taps, ETC etc. Nothing looked wrong, but he remained unable to move, breathe, or do anything. Finally after a week in the hospital, we found the cause. He'd brought a bento box on the flight of sashimi made from fugu, aka blowfish. The chef that had prepped it obviously had done a bad job, and the fish's poison, a potent paralytic, 
had tainted the sashimi and slowly paralyzed the patient after he ate it on the flight. He luckily hadn't suffocated before the flight touched down and the waiting paramedics could intubate him and bring him to the hospital. Obligatory not a doctor but my third child had a super rare disorder that is literally one in million. No one at maternal fetal medicine knew what they were seeing. I unfortunately had to terminate the pregnancy because she had severe brain and heart defects as well as very distinctive craniofacial defects. The doctor who did my abortion had never seen anything like her and he has been doing them for decades. I ended up diagnosing her myself after seeing her because I had to know what did that to my little girl and if it was likely to recur. We confirmed it with genetic testing. Turns out she had acromelic frontonasal dysostosis. It's a rare form of frontonasal dysplasia with 18 previously documented cases. It really sucks she had to be that one in a million. Not me but my wife. She had a patient with a colostomy bag. The colostomy hole had an STI in it. I'll let your imagination figure out how she contracted the STI. This happens way more than us nurses want to acknowledge. Bro, not here to mention a one in a million medical case but to thank Reddit and their community for making this question. I'm a general practitioner and most of the cases and experience here are really educational. Please do it again Reddit and doctors of Reddit. Thanks. I had a serum amylase of 5280, normal is 8100. A pancreatic exploration was done surgically and revealed a perfectly normal pancreas. Doc had no explanation for this. Not a doctor, but my best friend is a med student. Told me he saw a patient with congenital insensitivity to pain with anhydrosis, and it's apparently an extremely rare disease, 11000000 are the odds of having it. It's where you feel no pain at all and you're unable to sweat, so you can hurt yourself without knowing it, or if in a warm place, your body overheats due to not being able to sweat, you have to be in a cold room with no sharp edges. The specific case my friend has was a girl that's 3 years old. Apparently her brother also had it and he died at 4 years old. They die super young because of the disease. Sad stuff. I am not sure if the person I know of can sweat. But my friend's boyfriend cannot feel pain. He is in his 20s. Not the doctor, but the patient. I had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and my only summer was in the center of my bicep. Of all of the places NHL shows up the bicep never really considered for a solo tumor. That's not even accounting that a 23 year old had NHL to begin with. My oncologist had been practicing for 30 plus years and had never seen NHL show up on a bicep until me. So the odds of a 23 year getting non-Hodgkin's lymphoma located somewhere other than a lymph node is stupid rare. Former EMT firefighter here. Got called out for chest pains in the middle of the night. Arrived on scene to find a mid-twenties male presenting with all signs and symptoms of a heart attack. Strange for someone so young in our area. Loaded him up and started heading to the hospital. 45 miles away. Code 1. Mid-transport. Mid-sentence. Dude straight stop talking. Looked us dead in the eyes and said I'm about to die. Eyes rolled back in his head and dropped down onto the gurney. Load the gurney. Checking pulses and monitors. No pulse. Starting CPR. We realized his eyes were back open and he was looking around the ambulance. We stopped compressions and checked for a pulse. Eyes stopped moving and no pulse. WTF. Start compressions. Eyes open. Looking around. He tried to say something along the lines of goodbye during compressions but he couldn't gather enough breath as we were smashing his chest to keep him alive. Stopped compressions. V-fib. Defibrillate. Drugs. Resume compressions. For the next 30 minutes this ensued until we arrived at the hospital. As I was writing the report, the doc came in and expecting to hear that the patient expired, he said instead well, your boy is alive. He's being transferred to cardiology but he's back to normal sinus rhythm. The look on our faces must have said something. Because the doc turned around on his way out and said he should have died. I don't know how he didn't after being down for so long. But he didn't. Good work guys. As an 18 year old EMT, this absolutely floored me. Come to find out he had an aorta dissect. But the hole was small enough to allow some blood flow during chest compressions. He underwent surgery and fully recovered. I'm not a doctor but when I had my son 31 weeks via emergency c-section, the doctors later told me that he had no pulse when he was born. 
They worked on reviving him immediately. I couldn't tell what was happening because there were about 8 doctors surrounding him. And had pretty much given up hope after about 5 minutes but weren't going to stop. At 6 minutes he took his first breath. The doctor said he'd never seen a baby that early come back after being flat that long. Today, my boy is 6 and completely healthy. No long term complications whatsoever. He was a champ in the Niku for 45 days before we took him home. I couldn't imagine my life without him. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.